Families of functions. Each function in the family is a transformation of the parent function. So we're going to be talking about a specific parent function in each problem, and then we're going to make a transformation, either shifting it up, down, left, right, reflecting it over an axis, or stretching it or compressing it. So let's talk about the different components. A vertical translation, moving it up or down, you're going to find that outside of the function. So if you see a number outside of the function, and it's generally to the right, if it's a positive number, we're going to shift it up, and if it's a negative number, we're going to shift it down. Horizontal translations, left and right, you're going to see it inside of the function. So you'll see a plus or minus some number inside that function. And just like when we did the absolute values, the one inside is actually going to be the opposite of what it seems. So when you see a plus, you're actually going to move it to the left, which is in the negative direction. And then if you see a minus sign, you're going to move it to the right, which is the positive direction. So remember, outside is the same as what it looks like. Inside is opposite of what it looks like. Now we have two different types of reflections. If the negative is outside of the function, then this is going to be a reflection over the x-axis. If you have that negative inside the function with that x, then this is going to be a reflection over the y-axis. Now for a vertical stretch or compression, we're going to be looking at that letter a, or the number a, outside of the function. So when a is greater than 1, this is going to be a vertical stretch. And then when the absolute value of a is less than 1, it's going to be a compression. So basically this is going to get taller and then the compression is where it's going to get shorter and it's going to shrink down. Okay? So now we want to actually take a parent graph of y equals x squared, which is a parabola, and we want to describe the transformation. So right now we're not focused on the actual graphs of these functions, we just want to talk about the transformation. So here you see this plus 4 inside of that part of the function. So this is going to be a horizontal shift left 4 units. Remember, it always goes in the opposite direction of what it looks like. Since it's a plus, we're actually going to go in the negative direction to the left. This one, example number 2, has a negative outside of that x function and it has a negative 7 outside of that function. So we're going to reflect over the x-axis using this negative and then we're also going to have a vertical shift down seven units. In example three we have a one-third outside and since that number is less than one it's actually going to be a vertical compression by one-third and this four inside tells us we're going to do a horizontal shift in the opposite direction so to the right of four. In example four, we have this five, and it's actually going to be a vertical stretch at a factor of five, and the plus two is outside of that x squared function. So we have a vertical stretch of five, and then a vertical shift up of two units. Now this last one, example five, we have this negative outside, which tells us we're going to reflect over the x-axis, a minus 3 inside, which needs to go in the opposite direction, so a horizontal shift to the right, 3 units, and this negative 9 outside, which is a vertical shift down 9 units. So this is how you can tell, based on the parent graph and our different descriptions of transformations, how we're going to shift that initial parent graph. Here it tells us to write an equation for each of the following transformations given the parent function is y equals x cubed. So these are actually the opposite of what we did on the page before. Instead of writing the description, given the description you need to actually write the equation of that transformed function. So I'm going to walk through this first one with you we want to do a vertical shift down three units. 
So remember, that means we're going to take our initial function, our parent function, and a vertical shift is going to be outside of the function. So it's outside of the parentheses, and it's true to whatever it says. Down is in the negative directions, so we want to subtract three units, and that's it. I want you to try number seven and eight, and then check back with me when you finish. So go ahead and pause and try them on your own. So for example number seven, it's a vertical compression of one fourth. So remember that vertical compression comes right outside of that parent function portion. So we just have that one fourth there. Example number eight, a horizontal shift right of two units. So remember horizontal shifts those need to go inside the parentheses with the parent function. And then whether you're going right or left is going to be the opposite of what it seemed like. So remember, plus goes to the left in the negative direction, and then minus goes to the right in the positive direction. So you should have y equals parentheses, that x minus 2 to tell us we're going to the right, close the parentheses, and then that cubed is going to go right outside that parentheses. So hopefully you got those right and you are getting the idea of how to transform these parent functions. Here we want to graph the following using the given transformations. So this isn't a function that we can actually write an equation of like x cubed or 2x cubed plus 1. So you're going to get used to seeing graphs like this where you just see something and then you have to do a vertical shift down one unit and a horizontal shift right two units. So one of the things that you can do is take each of these major points and you can do a vertical shift down one unit and a horizontal shift to the right two units. So we can mark that as A prime, B down one to the right two, and there's our B prime. C down one to the right two, and there's our C prime. D down one to the right two, here's our D prime. And then E down one to the right two, and then here's our E prime. Now when we try to go and graph the moved points of F and G, they're not gonna fit on our graph. So. You want to make sure you're always going to have extra space. I have this extra bit of graph that just comes out for me. But f down 1 to the right 2 to give us our f prime. And then g down 1 to the right 2 to give us our g prime. Now I can just, it's literally like connect the dots. And then I can connect these together. So mine aren't going to be the straightest lines, but we're going to connect here. And then from D to E, this is like a semicircle that connects, and then from F to G. Of course, you would try to use a ruler. Um, I don't have that on here, so I just did freehand, so this is very messy. But hopefully yours is a little neater than mine is. Okay, here's an example, and I want you to go ahead and try this on your own. So go ahead and jot this down on your graph paper and follow the same steps we did. Just move one point at a time, a horizontal shift left one unit and a vertical shift down one unit, and then see what you get. Then you can check back with me and see how you did. So when you shift all your points to the left one and down one, and then you connect them carefully, this is what you should end up with. Hopefully that's what you got. Now here's one last example, and we'll work through this together because it's dealing with the reflection over the x-axis. So we're going to reflect over the x-axis, and then we're going to do a vertical shift up of three units. So remember, this is our x-axis right here. So that's the first thing. You need to make sure you actually reflect over the correct one. So in order to get that point over the x-axis, this one you just want to move straight up and straight across that x-axis. So we move two to get to the axis, so you need to move two more so it's reflected over. Now from here, we have to do an additional vertical shift up three units. So let's go one, two, three. 
And then we can take this point, shift it over the x-axis. So since this one's above it, we want to go below. And again, we want to go straight down, right across, 1, 2. So go down 1, 2. And then we need to do a vertical shift up 3 units, 1, 2, 3. And then this one, likewise two away so we're going to go two more to get that reflection over the x-axis then our vertical shift up three units one two three and then our final point it's actually on the x-axis so we don't need to move it at all and then we just need to do the vertical shift up three units one two three and then from here we can just connect our points i'm going to get myself a red line and then when you connect your points in that order, this should be a reflection over the x-axis and then shift it up three units. That's it. Make sure to submit any questions you have on the website.